So far, we've looked at the theory for constructing a GOAT-based plan, but now we have to program one. In the end, what we're after is an algorithm that sorts through the actions and matches their effects with other preconditions to construct a plan. So we start by getting all the available actions an agent can perform. These are given to the planner, which checks through all of them to see if, in principle, they are achievable. Remember that little is achievable method we wrote for the actions that always returns true? Well, this is the test for that. Now, if you needed to put some other logic into that method that would have an action rejected by the planner before planning even takes place, then this is where you would put it. But we are just working on the principle that all actions are going to be achievable. Then we start building a graph beginning with an initial node. Now, this initial node is going to have the world states as its effects. We then look through all the achievable actions for ones that can be performed given the states in the first node. Each matching action creates a new node and a new branch in the graph that we're constructing. We then explore each branch for another action that can be attached using the preconditions and effects. This process continues down each branch until a path is satisfied that matches the initial goal or the planner runs out of actions. If a path is found, that path becomes the agent's queue of actions and then the agent starts to perform them. So let's start creating this planning class. Right click down in your assets and add another C sharp. We're gonna call this a G planner. Then open that up and first thing we're going to do is at the top add using system.link again for sorting things like our dictionary. And we will also create a helper class at the top, so a public class for our node. So remember we're constructing a graph and we're doing that with the planner which will link all of our actions together in a plan. But rather than link the actions to other actions, we're actually just going to create a set of nodes that are linked to one another. And then they will just hold on or point back to a particular action. Okay, so first of all, we're going to have a public node, which is the parent of this node. Then a public float, which will be the cost for the action, which will be used in determining which plan is actually the cheapest, should there be multiple plans. Then we want a public dictionary, and you can probably imagine what's going to go in here. Yes, string int for the state that we're going to store. Initially, that will be the world states in the first node. And then the public g action the action that this node is talking about or pointing to. Okay, so that's the properties of that node. Now let's construct it. So public node, node, parent, float, cost, dictionary, string, int, all states and finally the action G action action okay and then inside of here we'll just make sure that we set each of our property values to the desired one so parent I should say this dot parent equals parent this dot cost equals cost this dot state equals all states but but not all states because it'll point back to that dictionary we actually want it to be a copy of that dictionary so in order to do that we create a new dictionary of string ints and we give it our all states to make sure that we've definitely made a copy and then this dot action will equal the action. Okay, to our planner. So down the planner, we can actually get rid of our update now start. It's just going to be doing processing on our graph. 
and constructing the graph. So it doesn't need to be a mono behavior either. Okay, so first of all, we're going to create our method. So it's public, it's returning a queue, and it's going to return a queue of G actions. So G action, and we'll call it plan. It's going to require a list of all of the actions. So G action, which we have, the agent has a hold of that because it constructs one itself. So actions, the dictionary of the desired goal. So dictionary and string int goal and the world states as well. So let's put world states and call that states. Okay, so in here, first of all, we will find out which of the actions that we've got is actually usable and hold on to those. So we'll create a list of G action usable actions equals new list of G actions. And then for each G action A in actions if a dot is achievable then we will add that one to our usable actions so usable actions dot add a okay so that's going to siphon out any actions that can't be run Right, now after that, what we're going to do is f set up our first leaf for our graph. Okay, so we want a list of nodes. Let's call them leaves equals new list of node. And the starting node, node start, is going to equal a new node. And it's going to have a null parent because it's the first one it's going to have zero cost again because it's the first one it's going to have a list of the states so that's going to be inside of our world's singleton okay so that's g world dot instance dot get world dot get states and then null for the action that it's pointing to because again it's just that very first node um, it's not actually pointing to a particular action right now once we've done that we want to build the graph so we're going to return true or false based on whether we've actually found a path so it'll be bool success and that's going to equal what we return from build graph that we're yet to write We'll pass it the starting node, the list of leaves, which at this point is empty, the list of usable actions, and the goal. So that's our build graph. Now when we come back from build graph, we will test if we have a success. If we're not successful, then what we can do in here is say that we haven't found a plan. Now I'm going to put a debug dot log in here to make sure that we do get some kind of feedback because there's a lot going on once you start planning and running your agents as to trying to figure out what is actually going on within the system and you might end up with an awful lot of debugs throughout the whole thing which is okay that's pretty natural until you get your head around the way that these uh, nodes and the actions all sort of fit together. So at this point, we will return null. So we're actually returning no plan whatsoever if there is no plan, which makes sense. Okay, what we're going to do then is if we've got this far, then we do have a particular plan that we can follow to achieve our goal. So now we're going to find the cheapest. So node cheapest equals null initially. And then we'll do a for each node leaf in leaves. Okay, and we're going to loop around all of these. Now at this point, we want to check if the cheapest leaf or node, so if cheapest equals null, 
then the cheapest node that we have is just going to be set to the leaf it means we've not found anything that is actually cheaper so we'll just use the one that we've got and then else we're going to put if leaf.cost is less than cheapest dot cost then we're going to say cheapest equals leaf okay so now at this point we have found our cheapest leaf node once we've got our cheapest node we're actually now going to work backwards through it and back up the chain to get the sequence of actions because we've gone down through the graph we found our cheapest leaf which is right at the end of the plan and now we need to make our way back up it okay so we're going to create a list of g actions which will be our resulting plan and that's going to equal a new list of g action and then node n equals the cheapest and then while n does not equal null we're going to say if n dot action does not equal null and it should only be null if we've hit the starting node anyway as we work up backwards along the path results dot insert at the beginning n dot action and then n equals n dot parent so that we're now got the parent in n and we're going to get its action and then we're going to get its parent and loop around until we've got all those so essentially you've created a linked list out of these nodes which represent your graph Right, now that we've got that, we can actually create our queue, which will have our actions that our agent can go ahead and perform. So queue, G action, uh, let's call it Q with lowercase, equals new queue of G action. And then for each G action, A in result, we're going to go q dot nq which puts an item on the end of our queue a and that's it so we're just transitioning them from our list into our queue now at this point if we've made it all the way down to here well we obviously have a plan because we've put that plan together so let's just go debug dot log the plan is and of course if you start getting just way too many of these debug lines as you're running the simulation then you can of course comment them out uh, so for each g action a in q and this is purely looping through it just to print them out so that you can see that you've got a plan so debug dot log of q and plus a dot action name we'll use and then finally return our q and that goes back to our agent with the plan so that is the bulk of the q method now we have to write the build graph and because there's still so much more code to type in we'll do that in the next video if you'd like to support our work like us on youtube visit our website holistic3d.com look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on patreon